Mon, Saki here with your weekly Monday memo, and oh boy, it's going to be a long one, so let's get to it, right? <laughs> um, so the first big thing to pay attention to is tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day of the upload, so Tuesday, the 25th. And on this day, the 25th, we're going to have a massive shift, everyone. Like, it's going to be big for a lot of us. And it's because it's a new moon uh, in Scorpio. Of course, we just entered Scorpio season. Um, and the new moon represents new beginnings. And, you know, Scorpio is connected with truth, the subconscious, intuition, magic, um, fear, like our shadow selves. So it's going to be kind of intense. Um, it's going to be a good time to really connect with creating something new. Um, you know, moving away from old fears, um, connecting with your intuition and letting whatever is hidden underneath, you know, all your subconscious desires and dreams come forward. And the peak times in local times is 3.48 a.m. in Los Angeles, 6.48 a.m. in New York, 11.48 a.m. in London, and 9.48 p.m. in Sydney, all the 25th. But that's not it. <laughs> that's not everything. Uh, on the same day, we're going to have a partial solar eclipse that's going to be visible in Europe, Northern Africa, and Middle East, and Western parts of Asia. Um, it begins around 8.58 a.m. GMT slash UT, um, and it's going to be at its greatest at 11.01 a.m., same time zone, GMT, UT, universal time, and ends around 1 p.m., same time zone. And this partial solar eclipse uh, not only takes place close to Venus alongside, you know, the whole new moon, um, and we just had Venus be a star point, enter star point, uh, on the 22nd, which also means there's going to be a lot of love and abundance energy connected to all this. And on top of that, solar eclipses, any eclipse, is known as the Great Shift. You know, um, traditionally you might know of, you know, the old <laughs> superstitions, if you will, with like big eclipses and stuff. It's often used in movies as, you know, the big time that you can open a gate and portal and all that stuff. And it's for a reason. It's because in our subconscious collective mind, we know that this represents a big shift. And together with the new moon in Scorpio, we're probably going to feel that very intensely. Let me just scroll down. There's a lot of things for me to go through, so I have a long list. <laughs> The 28th, uh, Jupiter retrograde enters Pisces, and Pisces is a gentle, dreamy, and artistic kind of sign, and Jupiter, of course, is a teacher of sorts, and in retrograde, it challenges us to see things from a different point of view. You know, sometimes retrogrades can be described as going in the opposite, uh, like the energies go in the opposite of what they normally do. So, for example, Venus, that normally would be, you know, love and abundance, in opposite, it might, you know, repel love or uh, feed into hate, if you will. But an even better way to describe a retrograde might actually be to have it shift a perspective, to challenge us, because what it really is is an optical illusion that the planets go backwards on the sky. Instead of following the normal path, it looks like they're going backwards, which is what a retrograde is. And so this, in a way, kind of challenges us to look at things differently. And so often during retrogrades, we get a lot of obstacles and challenges and hardships, but they are for our highest good. Um, and not all retrogrades feel horrible. Some of them can feel pretty great. You know, Mercury is kind of known for being very like disruptive, but Jupiter actually can challenge us to really see a new point of view in a very good and healthy way. And together with Pisces, it might challenge the way we think with abundance, uh, how we see things with, you know, our dreams and artistic sides as well. Uh, the 29th, Mercury joins the sun um in scorpio so we're going to have a lot of intense scorpio energy <laughs> and that means that our communication may be a bit more blunt and intuitive uh, we might want to explore deeper topics heavier topics darker topics in our conversations and our thoughts uh, and on the other hand we might also become a little bit isolated because sometimes scorpios tend to be uh, like very shielded very guarded wanting to be seen but at the same time wanting people to stay away. <laughs> um, so be a bit mindful of that. 
Um, and it's all about, you know, fears and desires becoming unearthed. And it's, you know, shadow work time for those of you who know what that means. And this goes hand in hand with the 30th when Mars is going to go into retrograde at 1.26 p.m. GMT Universal Time. Now, Mars retrograde is going to bring challenges that force us to look and explore our ambitions, goals, and passions. You know, Mars is often associated with passion and even conflict, you know, war, all those sort of things. Um, so this could go either way for some people because... As I mentioned, retrogrades are there to challenge us to shift perspective. So it could be that if your status quo is uh, very intense, you might experience this retrograde as things slowing down and being frustrating. And, you know, things connected to your ambition and your goals are going to be hindered and you're going to be forced to rethink a lot of things and a lot of paths forward. Um, however, if you are already in a bit of a lull or you're going very slowly about things or you're not pursuing your genuine ambitions and goals, then Mars will probably cause more conflict and intensity for you that will force you to kind of move forward. Um, either way, Mars retrograde tends to feel quite intense. It is an intense planet. It's intense energies. It's intense because it has a lot of things to do with things that are very important to us. So, you know, be aware of this and as always with any retrograde and any astrological energetic interference, if you will, um, as long as you always listen to yourself and try to move in alignment with your values, your truth, your authenticity, your goals in life, you should come out just fine. It's all about flowing and challenging and adapting because the challenges are for our highest good. Um... And there's also, I want to say a heads up, because the 30th is also the day before the celebrations of Samhain. Um, generally, the celebrations begin the evening of the 31st and go into the 1st. Um, you know, more commonly, this is known as Halloween. It's not the same tradition. Not everyone celebrates Samhain. Uh, I'm a pagan, so it's important to me. Of course, depending on what sort of pagan you are, it might not be relevant. I also celebrate a more North specific holiday and such. Um, but a little reminder, because... With other words, no matter which cultural label you place on that time of year, it's generally agreed upon that during this time of year, the veil is thinning, which means that for those of you who are very sensitive to spirits, um, human or non-human, or energies, you know, empaths, are probably going to feel a lot of external influence during this time because the veil is thinning, meaning anyone uh, on the other side of the veil you know, spirits and such, are going to feel way more present. They're going to be way more noticeable, uh, which is why it's also called spooky season, because a lot of people start picking up on that. Even people that aren't really into all that or in tune with all that might notice some things during this time. So heads up for that with all this intensity. <laughs> Um, and of course, as usual, I drew a card for the week for those of you who feel it's for you. And it looks like this. And it's fall into my arms, surrender, holding the opposite extremes of life. And this is such a beautiful and relevant card. And you can see almost in the art, it's like the astrological energies are flooding down into this person and they're just receiving it. And this is pretty much what I feel is the message for us this week collectively, no matter if you felt drawn to this card or not. It is a very intense week. There's going to maybe be a big shift for a lot of people. And with Scorpio, Scorpio can be like one of those things. I, I'm intensely Scorpio in my sign, so I'm very familiar with the energy. And Scorpio can be one of those things that can be really, really growth inducing as an energy, but it can also be very, very intense and scary and, you know, very like dark and heavy stuff. Um, so consider this time a very good time to go inwards, to connect, um, yeah, <laughs> listen to your intuition and look over your goals and all that stuff and things should be fine and if you're feeling tired or if you're having insomnia or if it's going up and down, you know why, it's just ho holding on this week and flowing with the energies and trying to celebrate this beautiful cycle and fluctuation of energy that we get to experience, right? And with that, I wish you a beautiful day or night wherever you are. Um, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, you should see a video 
possibly next week for my Monday memo. There might not be one before that because this is a very intense period for me. There's a lot of changes going on in my personal life as well right now, so my upload schedule is so-so, but I have a lot of meditations and new content and videos planned and they will be up soon. And I have taken all of your feedback and there are videos for you, so stay tuned. Have a beautiful week.